Welcome to the Moog Sonic Infinity DVD Collection. My name is Mike Adams, president of Moog Music. We appreciate you taking the time to watch, listen, and learn about Moog products. This series will provide you with an in-depth overview of the Mini Moog Voyager. If you're a Voyager owner or a prospective Voyager owner, you'll find this DVD invaluable. Bob and the team that designed the Voyager created a product that is both simplistic and sufficiently complex that you can start enjoying it immediately or you can work with it for years and will still be discovering new ways to use it in your music. Brian Kehu, who is a member of the initial design team for the Mini Moog Voyager, will be demonstrating it today. Brian's been working with Moog gear since the 70s and has been professionally demonstrating it at NAMM shows since 1997. When Brian is not helping Moog, he is a professional musician who's recently produced the Fiona Apple record, who's the keyboard tech for The Who. Uh, he is one half of the Moog cookbook, and along with co-author Kevin Ryan, has recently written a definitive work on recording The Beatles. Brian, let's talk about the Mini Moog Voyager. Quite a few years ago, the company was only making the Moog Ferger effects pedals and theremins. Many people wanted a synthesizer, and they wanted something somewhat like the old Mini Moog from the 1970s. When Bob talked about making a new keyboard, he said that there were enough old Minimogs, 13,000 of them, in fact, that they didn't need to make an exact duplicate of the old one. Plus, there were reasons to improve upon it. There were problems with tuning on the old one. There were limitations on the circuitry. So there are many things that could be done now to improve upon it. The first choice was to make it an analog synthesizer, to use the sound qualities and the tone shaping of the original analog Minimog synthesizer. So when they designed the new synthesizer, which is this Minimog Voyager, it uses the same filters, same oscillator type circuitry to create the same sounds that the original one had before. They decided to improve upon it a bit more and give it some features that the original didn't have and also to stabilize and improve some problems with the original one. As I talk about the synthesizer, we'll discuss some of those things as we go through it. The Minimo Voyager was a great design, incorporated the best of the old with many of the new features available now too, of course. Most people expect a keyboard nowadays to have MIDI. Certainly it was developed in the 1980s after the Minimo was originally popular. So it's a very easy thing to implement nowadays, and this keyboard does have quite a bit of MIDI control as well. Certainly notes in and notes out, the keyboard itself is a MIDI controller, so we can do quite a few things with it. But we've also implemented the front panel controls as MIDI controllers, so you can use the switches and knobs as MIDI controllers. They can feed into a sequencer, and you can record your performance turning knobs, twisting bits, and it'll record to the sequencer and play back, again, adjusting the synthesizer just as you did when you performed. They've also got the option to control other external MIDI devices by signing these as MIDI keyboard controllers. So you can have this adjusting a filter on something else, you can have this one adjust the panning on a MIDI mixer, anything you want to do creatively, you can assign these controllers out. One of the major improvements of the original MIDI Moog was the addition of presets. Because we now have digital control over an analog synthesizer, we can store the settings on the front panel and any internal settings as a patch preset. You can name it and so forth. The newest MIDI Moog Voyagers come with 896 presets available. You can also upgrade an older one that had 128 programs available to up 896 in memory. One of the neatest features that people remember from the original Minimoog was this tilting back panel, and people very much associate that look with the Minimoog. So the new Minimoog had that as well. It makes it very flexible because some people use it on the table, keep it flatter, or up on top of a keyboard where you need to adjust it. So it does give you an adjustable back panel, which is more useful for most people. <laughs> 